Hello, I'm Chris Parkin, and this is the Benelli Lupo in 6.5 Creedmoor. Welcome to All for Hunters. The Benelli Lupo Synthetic, as well as 6.5 Creedmoor, is also available in 243, 6mm Creedmoor, 270 Win, 308 Win, 306 Springfield, 300 Win Mag, 8x57, 7mm Rem Mag, 6.5 PLC are also available. The barrel is cold hammer forged and 560mm or 22 inch long with a 1 in 8 inch twist rate. Overall length is 1122mm which is 44 inches. Overall weight is 3230 grams which is 7.3 pounds. Length of pull is adjustable from 350 to 385mm which is 13.7 to 15.1 inches. The single stage trigger is adjustable from 1,000 to 2,000 grams. One of the great things about a magazine like this is that as well as taking out the gun to load it, you can actually leave it in the gun and just pop additional rounds in by the top. Well, you've seen the Benelli Lupo in use. I've got to say, I'm quite impressed with it. I think it's evident on paper, as we can see here. It's pretty accurate, pretty consistent, and I'm very happy to shoot it. And, you know, I have no doubts in it at all. And, and it hasn't disappointed me with anything from 120, 140, 143 grains, or 120 grain copper. So that's great. Now, the barrel on this is Cold Hammer Forge. It's 22 inches long and um, Benelli use a cryogenic treatment on it, which is supposedly there to ensure the consistency of the barrel. Uh, I can't really vouch for that super long term, but what I can say is that I got this quite hot because the weather has actually finally started to warm up a little bit. I was shooting at about 18 degree air temperature, shot about 20, 30 rounds through it overall, and uh, it was getting quite warm at the end of some of the strings, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it shot. It certainly maintained its sub MOA guarantee. The barrel is screw cut 14 by one for a moderator and I fitted the Stalon moderator that was supplied with it. That's 352 grams, so it's pretty lightweight. Stalons are a very good moderator actually for reducing recoil and noise. And of course it doesn't really affect the balance of the rifle too much. Now it's not a featherweight rifle in any respect and I've actually told you the statistics on it earlier in the video, but it handles really nicely and there's a few reasons for that. Number one, it actually uses, they call it a chassis, but I call it a bedding block, but essentially the center section of the stock here is an aluminium block and the rifle bolts to that and then the fore end's fitted to it and the back end's fitted to it and as I showed you in the packet here, you get cast spacers here so you can change the cast on the stock, you also get length of pull spacers so you've got a good adjustment on the length of pull and that is using this progressive comfort recoil pad again, on a 6.5 Creed one, there's not a lot of oomph to actually absorb, but it's very comfortable. It grips into your shoulder and it's rounded, so it fits in easily, you know, mounts up smoothly. Now, 
The tang safety is a two position thing, you know, back for safe, forward for fire. If it's on back for safe, the bolt's locked, but there is actually a little button just there and you can open it up and that works just fine. The bolt handle shape is quite characteristic. It's, let's just take that out. It's quite unusual, but, and with it being a three lug bolt, it's a 60 degree lift. Bolts are push feed, so you've got a nice plunger ejector, flicks the brass fine, and you've got an extractor claw on the side. Again, there's plenty of primary extraction pressure, so you can get those cases out without anything sticking. That bolt does run very, very smoothly. I'm gonna try and deliberately jam this now. You can just about deliberately jam it if you try by pushing it outwards like that but you get to an angle, you very push through and it, yeah, that's a very, very slick bolt. And it's all part of this best coating system. Now, if I read you this here, the best coating looks like a sort of almost like a gloss finish on it, but the rifle itself is guaranteed for 10 years, but it's actually the best warranty in the world because the corrosion protection is 25 years from date of purchase. And interestingly, it does maintain the sort of look of a classic blue rifle, although it is a, a slightly deeper black hue and it's got a very glossy look to it. But I'm actually, I think it's a really nice looking rifle. And given the fact it's been designed a little bit with a blank sheet of paper, I think it's been done very well because they've used some of the characteristics of some of the best rifles on the market and kind of combined them to make a really smart rifle. Now the stock's got a stud at the front for the bipod and you've also got an inlaid stud at the rear for the sling and there's an inlaid stud at the front for a sling as well so you can make sure you can double up on all that kind of thing. There's textured grip on here from these sort of checkered pieces and on the fore and then the fore end's got finger grooves too and the underside of the fore end is slightly right, it's like a, a flatter radius and it does suit well off the sticks for a hunting scenario. It's also stiff so it's fully free floated and the barrel doesn't contact it if you're a bit aggressive or brutal with your handling. So I'm more than happy with that. Picatinny base is screwed to the action, never a problem at all because anything you can have is gonna fit with those. This rifle, as it's been supplied to me, just excluding the moderator, but the rifle uh, is actually 1700 pound UK RRP and that includes the Burris scope so and the rings as well. That's actually a, quite a significantly good deal and of course with a 312 by 56 that's giving you a lot of versatility. Now the trigger is just bought from 1000 to 2000 grams. It's not 100% crisp. There is a tiny, this is a safe dry fire now, there's a tiny tiny little bit of creep on it but you do, you've really got to be trying to, trying to look for it and it's small and predictable in use and I'm very happy with it. There's plenty of space if you've got glove fingers as well because this trigger guard is actually aluminium that's part of the chassis whereas the stock and the external of the stock back here is polymer but that chassis in the center is there it's all hard anodized aluminium and there's a it works there's a big uh, recoil lug in it which fits into a rebate in the bottom of the action and i think it's going to be really stable and work long term the only critique I've got of it, which doesn't really matter to most people, is if you want to take it apart, the front screw to get the action out of the stock is there. The rear screw is actually underneath the bolt here and underneath the scope. Now you do get a, a T25 Torx key, which you can do that, like an L-shaped key, so that's fine. It's just a little bit fiddlier than some guns with two screws in the bottom, but it all works fine. And it's all proprietary components within as well. You'll see that on screen. I can't get over how slick that bolt feels. Two things now I'm gonna concentrate on in detail. Number one, it's a twin column magazine. These are awesome because you can clip your rounds in quickly on top, no problem at all. And when you're shooting, if you want to, you can clip around into the mag through the port on the side. As well as that, if you throw a round in there, it will feed straight to the chamber. So I'm super happy with that. And it's a totally, again, proprietary design. Seems to go in the rifle and fit in easily enough and it's a five round magazine. But because this bolt has been so beautifully sculpted and narrowed down in the center, you can actually have five plus one and it doesn't affect it. So if you put five in the mag, put one in the chamber, close the bolt, you can still put the mag in because some rifles don't always take the mag full if the bolt's closed. So that does mean you've got five plus one capacity. 
The fact you've got the recoil spacers means you can set it up as you want. The cast adjustment spacers I haven't used. That's a different factor you don't normally see on any rifle. It comes a little bit from the Benelli shotgun world, I suppose. But you can do that, you know, give it a little bit of movement on there, a little bit of space on it as well. And it also helps you, you can use it to space away from the trigger if you want to as well. And even talking about the trigger, you know, the grip's got, it's not really got much of a palm swell. It's a fairly slim open radius grip, but you know, it holds well in your hand and that checkering pattern is, is, is assured without being sort of onerous. And, you know, I'm hard pressed to think what is going to make that corrode because the bolt handle, everything like that's got this best coating on it. So, you know, fingertips and, and sweat from your hands, moisture from your skin is one of the most corrosive things a rifle's ever going to experience. That's not going to have this problem. The stock isn't going to have an issue. The stock is quite solid feeling. It's not got any resonance to it. The recoil pad works perfectly well. And uh, there we go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can keep track of the regular uploads. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.